I tend to see river as you know where the uh, the water come together, uh, and then uh, as you might know, it's part of the hydrologic cycle. Um, so you know the water is in a in a circle. It's a kind of large circle, uh, and we tend to start from the ocean. So the you know water vapor evaporates from the ocean and it becomes a cloud, and you know put the snow and the rain on the mountains on the prairies too. And then eventually, that water all kind of finds its way down to the ocean. And the river is the passage of the water, you know, going back to where it, it uh, came from. Groundwater and water, you know, it all kind of obeys physical laws. And the physical laws that is described by equations. And um, so I these equations, you know, if you're talking about, you know, equation of billiard ball, and then each billiard ball has equations in it, and it just kind of obeys, you know, wherever it goes. And uh, uh, so groundwater has one of those equations. So how it flows underground, we don't see it. You know, it's all hidden. And uh, uh, so there's something called uh, boundary conditions. So that basically dictates the uh, circumstance under which the equation just, you know, moves this thing uh, around. So you've got to have this boundary condition. And um, that's what I, my mentor told me, you know, uh, when you walk around mountains or rivers, you know, always have to have that boundary condition in your head. And just think in terms of, you know, boundary condition. And then, and then you start seeing this, you know, hidden water, you know, popping up in front of you. Um, and then, so that allows you to spot, oh, there are some uh, grove aspen there. And why is it there? Well, because there are certain things that makes aspen grow there, and often that is associated with, you know, groundwater near the ground, and that sort of things. I, I do think about that when I walk around, you know, the, the mountains, and I try to tell that to my students too. One characteristic of uh, good science is that, you know, it it, it has to. Well, not always, but in by and large, it has to look good, you know. So what that means is there's kind of innate sense in us when you look at some theories or, you know, the answer to the questions, um, that has to have some elegance or the, the beauty in it, you know, the, the things that make sense. And then often uh, that guides us, you know, to where we get to, and then that Sense is not always there, but then just pops up every now and then. Hmm, this just doesn't look like so. Maybe there's something wrong with this. So, so that th there is that spirituality there, uh, and then theoretical physicists you know, of, always talk about this. Uh, we're kind of a little messier because we actually have truth on the ground. You know, there's observational facts, um, and then usually they're really messy uh, because of in, uh, inability to measure it or inability to know it. But, yeah, that, you know, the beauty of spirituality that guides us. Because of what I do, I often go to some uh, really majestic places. Uh, and then, so, for example, I, uh, <coughs> I do study uh, snow in the mountains because, you know, snow is the source of water in the, uh, in the Bow River. And uh, so you're surrounded by this, you know, the, the beauty of the, the mountains. And then... So I guess, you know, why it's there. Uh, but, but then uh, it's kind of difficult for me as, as a, a, a geologist, a geoscientist, because I'm supposed to know, you know, how the mountain kind of formed and how it's kind of changing all the time. But, you know, I guess, you know, the, the beauty itself has a power to actually make you forget about that. You know, just odd. Wow, I'm just so you know, blessed to be seeing this and be in this environment. And then I, yeah, sense uh, God there.